Well, you know, I mean, obviously Terrence Howard, he's had an awakening of some sort. So hats off to the brother for for that. Uh, because first of all, it takes a lot of courage to even come out in such a, a mass setting like that uh, on a big stage on your own platform and then say, hey, this is why I'm doing this and this is why I'm stepping back. I think he made even a reference to the fact that, you know, why am I going to perform on stage for tips when I could be tapping into this unlimited source of energy, you know, so to speak, is what he was really trying to say. Uh, and he dropped a lot of information in a very short period of time and may not have been able to exactly articulate specifically what everything he said meant. I've made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that you know, Pythagoras was searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. Why would I continue, you know, walking on water for tips when I've got an entire generation to teach a whole new world? Well, let me put it this way. All energy in the universe is expressed in motion. All motion is expressed in waves. All waves are curved. So where does the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids? There are no straight lines. So when I took the flower of life and opened it properly, I found a whole new wave conjugations that expose the in-between spaces. That's, it's the thing that holds us all together. Wondering how the universe really came to be. And I fell in love with this thing called the flower of life. You guys know Da Vinci? Do you know what he spent most of his life trying to figure out? I want you guys to know about a 6,000 year old secret. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Now you know this is one of the oldest symbols in human history, right? This symbol was found in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt, and it had been molecularly burned into the wall. And it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the, the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs. And the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole life in secret trying to uncover. The same secrets that Pythagoras was desperately trying to uncover. But their problem was they kept seeing this in a two-dimensional space. They couldn't get it out of this two-dimensional frame. And as a result, they got stuck in this plane, a flat plane. Now, what da Vinci and all of them wanted to do they were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it? Well, apparently, there were secrets inside of it. Shapes, they got the Macurba and all of those other things out of it. But they were misled by something I think called a straight line. You guys believe in straight lines? You believe there's straight lines in the universe? Well, let me hit you with something. All energy in the universe is expressed in what? It's in motion. If something is still, there's no energy. Kinetic, right? All motion is expressed in what? You look at galaxies, are they expressed in straight lines? Expressed in vortices. All vortices are expressed in what? Waves. All waves are curved. Show me a straight line in nature. You show me where the platonic solids come from. Where do they have their foundations in our universe? Are there any straight lines? If you look at anything, there are no straight lines. That's been the mistake. We've been looking at these straight lines, this Euclidean way of thinking and missing the curvature of nature. So here we are, back with the curvature of nature. And you have all these little pieces. Now this has always been an information system. So compa compare some of these points, take a point here, and say, well, what's the space in between all of these things? Now, they've said that all the in-between spaces, if this is the Earth and this is the moon right here, all this in-between space is filled with what? A void. There's nothing in the void. Well, I found that there is something in the void. Um, being able to define the entire electric field, plasmic field, mm -hmm. and patent it, and the things that I discovered with that, prove that the platonic solids, which our entire infrastructure is built off, 
were only averages and approximations, and that all of the postulates and axioms they built off of are erroneous. Mm -hmm. And being able to present that, but also being given the blessing of defining the magnetic field, the feminine side, mm -hmm. and patenting those, mm -hmm. the expanding expansion or the unfolding of the yeah. universe. But then having being given the opportunity to define the neutral that sits between it or the constitution which is the linchpin mm -hmm. that mitigates between the micro which is the electric world and the macro which is the magnetic world and this works as a bridge a common factor between so having discovered and patented the wow. um, uni grand unified field equation yeah and putting it into practice and building all of these new um, industries that have come from it, from transcendental lighting to tangential flight mm -hmm. um, to in super symmetrical mm -hmm. systems. I've patented four super symmetrical systems. Wow. And a super symmetrical system is it always aligns. That's how the universe behaves. And according to science, there are no super symmetrical right. systems because the platonic solids have a thing called discrete symmetry. And for everybody out, the platonic solids were um, five poly polygons that are based upon straight lines and flat place, flat mm -hmm. planes. Um, and there are the uh, tetrahedron, the hexahedron or the cube, the octahedron, um, the dodecahedron, and the icosahedron. Mm -hmm. Now for millennia, since the days of Pythagoras uh, and the days of Plato, these were the undisputed fundamentals of God, and they said that they pulled it out of the flower of life. Well, referencing the flower of life, which if you don't know what that is, uh, you know, anybody out there, it's a sacred geometrical figure, and it really goes back to uh, as above, so below. If you're looking at, for example, uh, just when you start off with the ovum with an egg, that's one sphere. And uh, by the time you add six more interconnecting spheres, you now have a seed. You have a seed of life. Then, you know, so it goes from a seed to a fruit to a flower. You know, so it's really a, a, a progression of life. And at the base of everyone's spine are a group of cells uh, that are in the form of the flower of life. And mostly all, almost all organic, uh, especially mammalian uh, uh, pe uh, uh, species, uh, there's this flower of life cellular formation in the base of the spine. It's there from the time you're born and stays there until you die. But that's just a representation in a biological life form. Uh, because as above, so below. When you go into the, to the next level where we're talking about the ether of space-time itself, this is where he was kind of really getting deep with it. He discovered when he unwrapped the flower of life, he discovered the energy grid, the grid that binds us all together. Mm -hmm. There is a grid that we're actually on. Mm -hmm. And when he's talking about the spheres, there are no straight lines. He's not saying mm -hmm. that the platonic solids don't exist. Platonic solids are part of the holographic matrix. Behind all of that, the only thing that does exist are electromagnetic waves. That's all, and there are no straight lines. So behind the quantum holographic universe, behind that, there is nothing but electromagnetic waves, and those waves are propagating and being sent into this realm, into this dimension, carrying energy, frequency, vibration, and when they interact with conscious thought, that's when they collapse things into platonic solids, which then collapse things into what we get as an illusion of solidity, an illusion of locality, an illusion of space and differentiation, and lose our perception. Uh, there's really only one true thing that does exist outside of what we consider to be the third dimension is consciousness. And so consciousness literally has divided itself into trillions and trillions of entities throughout this entire universe. And the method that it, it emanates from is through something called the vesica piscis. Now the vesica piscis is actually part of the flower of life. So where you have the intersecting circles in the flower of life, uh, that is those in uh, every one of those intersections is a womb. So at every single uh, plot unit in space time, which is the smallest amount of distance you can measure, uh, in time you can measure in space time, all around us, all through us, and out and, and, and everywhere that you know that exists, is this flower of life. I mean, everywhere now, every single spot where the flower of life is located, there's also the intersections, and those intersections are the vesica pisces. Now, the vesica pisces emanates energy into the third dimension. 
I don't know, that's a pest. It's, it's literally a wound. Just like when you cut down, open, cut open a lemon, cut open an orange, cut open a grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a human being is born through a wound. Uh, life primarily comes through wounds. And this is why even in the biblical text, the biblical, the, they reference the matrix. The matrix means the womb. So it's mentioned, I think, five or six times in the actual, in the modern day Bible itself, which is copied from more ancient texts, but the, the name, the matrix for the movie didn't come from somebody's brain. They just made it all oh, sound like we'll make it the matrix. No, the term the matrix actually comes from the Bible. And what it says is that in order for a man to be born, he must exit the matrix and that he must come out of the womb. In order for any life forms to form in this third dimension, it must come through the womb. And this energetic grid that, that's created by this sacred geometrical thing called the flower of life literally connects every single one of us. We are all literally sitting on this grid. It's this invisible, invisible grid that we're on. This is why quantum entanglement works. It's because we're all in that same energetic grid that is created by this flower of life. So, uh, you know, if I take two particles and or even two photons and I utilize a, a laser to do something called parabolic down conversion, and get them on the same frequency, I can take one of those particles to the other end of the universe and I could change the information on the one that's local to me and the other one of the other end of the universe will change instantaneously bypassing the speed of light. Yeah. How is that possible? It's because we're on this flower of life matrix grid mm -hmm. and everything literally is connected and distance is even an illusion. So we are really living in a fractal holographic universe and what he was trying to say is that the, the, the projection from this flower of life creates this illusion that we're operating and living in. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't mean that we're not real, but what it means is the mechanism used to create this third dimensional illusion comes and emanates, the energy emanates through that flower of life from the vesica pisces into this dimension, uh, and, and along with then conscious, consciousness intervention helps slow down the frequency and vibration of the, the electromagnetic waves which then give us the illusion that things are solid and things have matter, things have substance, things have distance and locality and everything else. So it's really amazing. I mean, this is um, this is an amazing, uh, I don't call it an experiment, but it's almost like we're living inside of a, an experiment or a creation, just like all the ancient texts have said. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, the, for what purpose to an end? I think that the main reason why we're here is to collect information and data. Mm -hmm. Because it adds above, so below. So if you take it from the below uh, uh, standpoint, from the human brain, encased in darkness, doesn't know what's going on on the outside, says to his friends, all its five senses, hearing, smell, seeing, touch, and everything, go out there and get, you tell me what's going on. The friends go out and collect information, bits of data. They themselves don't know exactly what they are collecting. They're just collecting information from the outside. They can't decipher it. They bring it back to the brain, which is encased in total darkness, and say, here's the data. And the brain wants to then figure out what's going on. Then it projects a hologram as to what it thinks is going on outside. And you navigate through the matrix that way. Now, you take it to the larger scale above, the universe itself is consciousness. Okay? And then what, it has, what has it done? It literally has divided itself into trillions of entities. And, it's, and now we're one of those. We're out here collecting bits of information as we live through our life, as we navigate through this matrix. And we send that data as a stream directly back to source so that it can experience itself subjectively from every different perspective in the third dimension. And all of this, to me, in my personal opinion, is emanating the energy that comes into this dimension to create all of this is emanating through this flower of life, uh, which uh, you know are these electromagnetic waves, this dark energy and dark matter, which is not just because it's dark, we gave it the name dark. It's just out of our frequency of vision. It's an actual wave. All electromagnetic waves are all made of light, even if you can't see them. So that's kind of what it was hitting on, man. Some really deep stuff.